let's let's look at this plate. Can everyone see my plate? Yes. This is an EMT plate. We'll start with little plate. And these things, I think it first came out in 1957. Um, and it's German. So much music technology is German. It's incredible. And it would take four guys to lift this up. And it was an attempt to make artificial reverb. And it never sounded like a real room, but it sounded really cool. The reason it doesn't sound like a real room is because it doesn't have its own sort of early reflections. Like if you walk into, if I walk into a big concert hall and I say, Mitch, it's going to take some time for my Mitch to hit the walls and bounce back to me. And that, th th that little delay time is going to give me as a human animal a sense of how big of a room I'm in. Well, plates don't really work like that. They don't really have early reflections. They just kind of, they have this sort of cool aura of, of thick, diffuse reflection that sort of comes back at you. So people have described it as two-dimensional, but in a good way. And what it does is we use it a lot for lead instruments that we want to place psychoacoustically in the front of the mix um, because it doesn't really have distance. And people have used tricks like tape delays and stuff to make pre-delays. So you can combine a plate with pre-delay and some have a pre-delay control. Um, but like I said, they're an artificial reverb that doesn't have the burden of a real room. It's more like a magic reverb, a, a, a lush, dense, warm, thick, diffuse reverb that has a long decay of a big room, but the diffusion of a small room. So it's kind of this interesting animal. And we've been using them for 70 years and they're not going anywhere. And that's why we have a new one. So let's listen to a bunch of plates. This is my uh, mandolin, which I didn't play. It's an Apple loop. Don't get mad at YouTube. It's, it's uh, what do they call it, public domain. And this is my dry uh, Apple loop uh, mandolin. And then we're gonna hit it with Sound Toy's new little plate. Little plate with the big sound. A little dry a little dry bit here just to remind your ear of what my dry mandolin sounded like and the decay time is three seconds and it's funny all almost every plate i noticed it when i was preparing for this they all default to three seconds i, I guess that's what they all defaulted to physically so all of the plates that we're going to be shooting out with today are three second plates lush, rich, two-dimensional, like a black and white movie is more poetic than a color movie. It's its own thing, you know? So let's, let's shoot it out now with some of the other plates around the world. And we do this a lot at the school. Sometimes it's hard to know how much, what you feel about something unless you compare it to something. So I have UAD's Pure Plate. I have Valhalla's Plate, their 140 plate. I have the UAD EMT 140, which is what Little Plate, I think, was modeled after. And then I have Altiverb's Wendy Carlos. So this is, I mean, Thanksgiving's coming. We're going to be breaking out the plates. Let's, let's pick a plate. And again, this is very subjective. This isn't like, that plate's number one and this plate's number two. Plates are subjective and they're touchy-feely. You're right. I take it back. Sound Toys Plate is number one. Forget what I just said.
there is that's the UAD pure plate. Next, we'll go to the Valhalla plate, and then we'll once you sort of do a little ear training, you'll see they're all quite platy. Um, and then we'll shoot them out so you can compare plates. let's go to a little shootout and we'll just sort of flick between them and get a little sense ear training wise some of the subtle differences between these great plate makers sound toys of course being the best Lots of different interpretations of the plate, remakes of the plate. Uh, some are brighter, some uh, are have more mid-range, some have more lows, some have different sorts of decays over different frequency ranges. Um, but I think for my taste, and they're all different again, this is not sports, this is art. Uh, but um, 
I what I love about the Sound Toys one is the incredible warmth and richness of it. And that's in keeping with the Sound Toys tradition of warmth, you know, not just the personality, but also the sound. And there's there's no but seriously, there's always been a strong uh taste zone of of creating warm things. And this is a quite a warm plate. And who doesn't like a warm plate? So not only is is the sound toys plate right in there with all of the competition and has its own personality within that competition. Um, but it does a couple things that these others don't do. Let's check this out. This is where it gets a little also, of course, sound toys always had to put a little twist on it. And uh, so here we have a low cut, and the other one, the other ones do have low cuts too. Um, but this allows you to trim some of the excessive low frequencies that especially can build up when you use the infinite decay mode, where it turns this into almost like a shimmer like so, sort of effect, and it can create sort of pads, uh, pad like qualities with this infinite decay. But you'll see sometimes when you push the infinite decay, so much buildup of low frequency gets a little excessive. So when you crank on the decay, sometimes that low cut, putting it right there, super handy. And then the one more thing that we'll listen is this wonderful modulation switch down on the lower left, which modulates the reverb tail as well. And uh, just listen to it. That's the best way to describe it. Listen to it. Well, I'm glad we could enjoy that meditative moment together. I feel better, don't you? That was almost like, I, don't, I feel like I went to a temple or something. It's beautiful. And and again, um, it's, it's, and it's an amazing sounding plate, but now also gives us lots of other sound design and mixing possibilities. Um, so very exciting new addition. I, do you want to add a little bit, Mitch, to the, to the plate talk? I think you let's turn your I think you're not your mic is not on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it goes uh south. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that was the thing, you know, so you said that sound toys we always try to put a little spin on it and uh, we try to make sure it's you know, it's in there so we're getting the essence of it. And this one was kind of important too. I mean, it's it's a simple set of controls because we wanted it to be really close. To, I mean, the unit is a box with a big cranky wheel <laughs> on it and 
and it goes up to five seconds. Yeah, I mean, you see the red zone on the interface there. That's where it starts. That's no longer real. That's all us. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's we. If you didn't read all of our stuff online, like I'm sure everybody reads everything that we do, but uh, uh, we actually picked up five of those plates. Um, you know, because Ken is that way. Yes, Ken. Uh, <laughs> and so and we're all the so beneficiaries. Got, oh yeah, it's awesome. So they had five real plates from around the country uh, at the office. They were ours. They belonged to us. So that if we wanted to blow them up, we could blow them up. Whatever. And uh, and so we found out. You know, they're all very different sounding. You know, you were showing the the shootout there. They sound different. Um, yeah. But with with that many, we were able to really kind of hone in on the essence of what it should sound like what's the what's the midpoint that they all hit the most important things that all of them had regardless and and so uh, uh chris santoro who was the kind of the lead on developing this for us uh is is really brilliant and he did an amazing job he listened he traveled he put lots of hours and lots of ears and uh on this thing and man uh and i and i will say this right now i was a guy who didn't care that we were going to make a plate and I was like, ah, okay, whatever. And, uh, because a plate, you know, there's, it's not a sound that I would normally reach for. And, uh, you know, you go, what I need a reverb. Well, I'm, I'll go for a room. So I like tight. And, uh, sure. so it's, it's kind of like saying, you know, that is a fantastic clarinet sound. And I go, yep. And I'm never using a clarinet in my music. So I don't care how good it is. <laughs> but this thing changed my mind big time because, uh, yeah. you know, uh, as I started playing with it, especially with the when we did our thing, you know, uh, and there's actually two things here because it actually goes shorter than a real plate, too. Okay. Um, so you get, you get a tightness that you can't get out of a real one that is kind of neat, too. And it's and with no low cut on it, it's so thick. You can add some like almost like cabinet resonance to things that has this cool feel to it uh so yeah so we we go both both ways yeah that's interesting i had i didn't know that and that's awesome and that's why you're here so so if you have sort of a dry sound that you want to keep very close but you but it needs some air a plate setting with a really short decay will give it some air but without any distance kind of thing yes yeah, because you, you feel this one doesn't, I mean, even, it's not super bright. It's, no. It's, it's got some highs and it has some space, but it's not that sizzly. Uh, so, yeah, when yeah. It's, when there's no decay on it, it's it's just really, I mean, I put it on a Moog bass and it was like, holy Moses, I never would have done that. It was kind of an accident. <laughs> and, and we went, okay, cool. It's uh, It's just got a good sound. That's what it you know, and the modulation, I just love the modulation. I love the modulation. I love the simplicity and the elegance of it and the warmth. Yeah. It's oh, so, okay. I know you guys are tight, like Apple and Google about company secrets. I know I've had dinner with you guys. It's tough. Yeah. Um, uh, are we going to see this in effect rack? You know what? I don't know the answer to that at this moment. I mean, yeah, it's, still it's, so it's really evasive. <laughs> Well, there's yes. I will. I will remain ambiguous and elusive. The uh, the there's a couple of directions we could go. So we're we're gonna think about it and figure out which one is the coolest. That's our that's our issue. What's the coolest way to okay. make things happen, right? Okay. So uh, yeah, we trust you. We yeah. trust you with the coolest thing. So that's yeah, a yeah. Fun I, I, I trust them too. I mean, I I, <laughs> I just told the the truth. It was like I well, who needs a plate? Oh my gosh, I do. <laughs> so, well, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys and everybody for this. It's obviously, um, it's going to be super in the mix at our school. So and we 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 tested out. We have our secret Friday test kitchen on Friday, and everyone was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" So. Uh, it so, passed the test kitchen test. I know it's amazing. Um, let me ask a quick right. question. Go ahead, please. Is, is, is this live or is this this is a pre-recorded video? So do you have access to this? Is, I, this is pre-recorded. I okay. can't do live. So I can, I can, because I want to. I like to give your guys some inside stuff when I'm here, right? Please. Okay. Talk so so if you, 
you'll you could take these home with you but uh like if you click on any of the numbers it jumps to that second position so you can instantly go from one second to 32 seconds which is kind of cool to be able to do that with one click because you get some drastic stuff and automating this thing is the bomb uh constantly riding those decay times and and modulation on and off and the low cut it's so cool you can really change an instrument into something new the other thing that I'll tell you about, I'm going to do a video about it. It's, it's out there, but not a lot of people know about it, is a is a feature called parameter lock. It's in our manual, so if you need to go look it up, you can look it up. But basically, it's a control option on a Mac and control alt on a PC, I think, and click the mix knob, and it will lock that mix knob wherever you put it. So you can scroll through presets without changing the mix, and that's really handy. In this case, I'm, I'm a guy who drops everything on an insert. And all these presets are designed to be uh, on a bus. So for me, I, I lock that down at 50-50 and scroll through presets. So there you go, parameter and then, lock. And you can quickly quickly compare things without getting disoriented with your settings. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, the mix does, you know, it, it's stored with the preset. And the reason for that, we, you know, we are an effects company. So a lot of the effects are direct on, you know, on a, on a track. And a lot of them are... Uh, bus based but uh anyway so well, now, well, no, you, now, now you know how to lock it in. that's beautiful but i think also people are going to have fun automating the decay times with this and getting some really musical you know sort of responses to things where if you want it tight for a couple of phrases where it's busy and then you want the end to really like bloom get that big reverb bloom you could ride it yep. all day amazing yep. okay Can, uh, uh let's 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 go to the outer limits take us to the outer limits um let's start with the effects um the effects collection uh just before we jump in to the, to the audio how long did, this must have taken like forever and this is it's insane when i look at these chains and we'll we'll listen to some literally two minutes but like what was your inspiration? When did you start this? Tell us a little bit. Well, I'm, uh, my inspiration is I'm a freak, <laughs> and uh, and I and I love the old sci-fi movies and the horror movies stuff. I grew up on all that stuff, and uh, and yes, it took a long time. It wasn't necessarily because it took a long time; it just took a long time. If if that makes sense, uh, we we were going to do it. We were going to put it out a couple of years ago, and we, you know, this is the holiday season, so we get all tied up in all this other stuff, and we kind of missed it. We're like, okay, we'll save it for next year, and then we're like, uh, and then all this. So three years, but okay. because of that three years, uh, all of them got tweaked and updated, and a couple of new plugins came out that got to be thrown in there, and uh, so they they all morphed, and the whole uh, we'll look at the drones thing that. That was like in the last two years, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we can do this right there. So, and that was so much I, fun. I, do, I, I, when we get to the drones, I want you just to explain how they work because honestly, like I made them work, but like, I didn't know what you did to make them work. Cause I don't, and I, <laughs> I'd love to hear. Okay. So let's jump into the yeah. effects collection. Uh, I use just a, uh, another Apple loop, YouTube algorithm police uh that's to to trigger these and we'll go through a few of them um they're dense they're complex chains you'll see here we go stop right there you can see the madness here you know it's 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 like the shining when she starts she goes downstairs and she starts looking through his he's i have to work and all work and no play and she knows he's crazy this is when i knew that mitch was crazy um in an amazing way and here's the thing for real hardcore sound toys fans this is like when you retro engineer and you mute stuff and you look at the tweak modes and you look at everything he did, this is a masterclass in sound design with sound toys. 
uh, and and it's also fun, but it's it, it really everything is purposeful. And a couple times I tried to deconstruct them. You'll see by like unmuting stuff, and you can see how each sound, the next move is built on the last one and does something to that, but then takes it to another place and then it takes it to another place. And it's this wonderful serial use of the effect rack. Um, it, 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 like I said, it's, it's both, it's the shining, but it's also just a wonderful embodiment and a collection of mastery of these plugins. And, and there's a lot of variety. So with all the talking, let's just listen a little bit. just say one thing here uh yeah it's, it's like seeing all your superheroes get to play together or something it's incredible uh and for those who are into you know using effect rack especially good for production mixing and mastering when you have a transition that's boring and you need to spice it up because it's that same drum fill that you've heard two million times and it doesn't get you excited anymore instead of hearing do 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 you need to hear or whatever it is if all you have to do is loop the drum fill put on effect rack and start to go crazy and just saying one thing while we're here if you need reverb everyone should know this but echo boy has reverb right reverb being a delay based effect um there's amazing reverb in Echo Boy, and I noticed that you use that quite a bit. So don't feel that when you're in effect rack, if you want to put a reverb on and then tremulate the reverb and pan man, you know, like you have reverb. So anyway, let's keep let's keep listening. <laughs> Thank you. 
you when you start to construct them and deconstruct them and go into the tweak modes when you do it because there's a lot of stuff in the tweak modes uh let's do this we're going to go to the drones next so there's three there's three categories of outer limits there's vocal based ones where I, I use a vocal there's effect ones where i use that guitar loop and then the drones um tell us about the drones because i don't even understand how you did that honestly like i don't and, be and before we go, it, it, for anybody who's going to deconstruct these, I mean, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. You see that knob right there called Recycle? That's a master feedback through the entire rack. So it, there are things you can turn off in these patches that will literally kill you if you're not careful. <laughs> I was watching Danny. I was like, oh, my God, don't turn that one off. Uh, <laughs> and, but yeah, when the recycle is cranked up, uh, that I mean, you, everybody knows what feedback is, so that's You've what you can end warned. up with. You have, you have been, been warned. warned. Yes, uh, be careful, speakers and ears. <laughs> so the drones were interesting. I, I'd done some stuff with uh, Echo Boy and some of our previous plugins, where you know it was kind of self-oscillating things, and uh, and it didn't dawn on me, you know, immediately, which is kind of weird, uh, that inside the rack. I actually had multiple sound sources possible with with our plugins. So any of the um, any of the delays will basically, with the feedback cranked up, will self oscillate. So that's a sound source. Uh, Filter Freak self oscillates and makes its own thing, and obviously that's somewhat tunable, which is kind of interesting. And then well, the strangest one, of course, was in one of those patches you showed is uh, for the effects I was using it as well is a uh, radiator. We modeled the real noise from that tube amp. So yeah. there's a white noise in there, and you can crank it up by turning it to the mic version of that. And so I have a little lightweight noise source to use as well. So uh, playing with those was like, okay, let's see what we can do. Let's see how far out we can go with the, uh, because, you know, basically the, the effect rack to me is it's a synthesizer where your input audio is the oscillator. So yeah. whatever you're putting into it, you have all these amazing uh, units that you can string together now to create a whole new sound. And you said earlier about the whole, you know, like the drum fill and thing is, yeah, intros. And these are crazy, wacky patches here, but they're, you know, I found some really cool stuff for intros and breakdowns and, and, and outros and things like that. So without, without being quite as weird as I am. <laughs> I self oscillate too, not in public. Um, usually, yes, I... yeah, you get in trouble for that. Uh, uh, all right, let's let's go to the drones. Send in the drones. Like you said, when I hear that, that's intro all day, instant intro, you know, just something fresh and expressive that catches your ear and draws you in and you hit him with something else or you hit him with that. I mean, but but there's so much good stuff here. All right, well, let's keep droning.
And what I like about them too is that they they develop over a long period of time, right? I mean, some of oh, them yeah. like it, like they they they're not loops. It's not that kind of a thing. They're these weird yeah. organic morphing unfolding of things. And then out of I don't know how you did it, but then like after thirty seconds, some entirely different event just comes out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, it became a challenge really to see how long I could make them go and continue to change. And, and that was the thing because for me, it was like bizarre therapy music where I just let this stuff go in the background and work all day. I'd be typing emails and suddenly go, I feel eerie. Oh, yeah, the things. <laughs> no, but you put them on 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then all of a sudden something comes out of nowhere that's like huge and scary. Yeah. Yeah. There's some cool um, There's some uh, super, super cool. I think useful on so many levels. Let's let's look at the last category, the vocal effects. Highlight a few things. I, I'm worried really about how much the fuzzy thinking is going on in the world. You should be aware of my choices. You are because I didn't realize until that moment that she was not yet capable of simply coming up with a fresh idea. I just have to pause it because this is one of my favorite ones of any of them. It's just, I mean, it's just so crazy. That 
Swedish preset, right? You some I don't know what you did. Let's 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 stop right there. This is just so crazy. So many great sounds. Um crazy dude. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun though. I, I I really hope that at some point someone takes the drones and the weird voice stuff and somehow puts all of it together and makes a hip hop record. I want it to be the next big thing in hip hop. <laughs> I think it could. I think it could. Trip hop, hip hop. Yeah. No, it so could. Yeah. But but here's the drone thing. Hop. Drone hop. Drone hop. I like that actually. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That works. The the thing is, in all seriousness, this is sound design, you know, and and fresh expressive sounds wake people up you know it's just a fact and 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 creative expressive sounds are it's all sound design in a funny way mixing and mastering in a way is sound design you know production all that stuff but but getting this much control and knowing what you're doing is cool it because this is very intentional and very purposeful i'm sure you had happy accidents here but oh, that's yeah. not what it is. This is when you when I look at all your tweak modes and everything you did. It's, you, you know, it's knowing what you're doing, really. You know, <laughs> and and sometimes not. But uh, and sometimes not. And sometimes yeah. not. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the other thing I know this this sounds like it's not for everybody, and we knew that, and and going into it, and that's kind of why we put it out around the Halloween time to say, you know, there's that's going on and you know stranger things was dropping season two was dropping at the same time and 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 craig over uh, that did the, the sound design for those guys uh, had some very nice things to say about the set so that was cool and uh uh but the other intention for this set was just to be able to see it i mean it's free so you've got no real investment if you're a sound choice five owner and you have effect rack you can just go get it and uh and being able to go like you said Look at the potential. Even if you're not going to use these sounds, you go, holy moly, look how much you can do with just combining these things together. It's, it's, it's crazy. And no, I but it's, like a, it's a secret pirate map of sound <laughs> toys. But it is. Yeah, yeah there's, there's some stuff in there that, that, uh, that I probably shouldn't even talk about. <laughs> and no, and I understand that. Um, so, all right, let's let's do this. So that that kind of is our presentation. I told you I keep it to an hour. I don't know how I do this. I must have done yeah. a few of these, perhaps. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't know because I, I I don't know. It's like I, you can wake up in the morning without an alarm clock. It's one of those things. Um, but let's do this. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out and hanging out and staying the whole time. That's amazing. I want to thank Mitch Thomas uh, just for being awesome um, and hanging out with us. Yeah, amazing. Thank you for making the time. And also thank my whole Sound Toys family up in Vermont. Uh, I'll be up there soon to kick it with you guys. Um, cool. Uh, and also Mike Hooks for putting everything together. Thank you. Um, let's do a couple questions. And then we'll get everybody back to turkey hunting or whatever they're doing tonight. Uh, don't do it at night. Uh, um, and uh, we'll also email everybody if you want to watch this again or, you know, stay in touch with us at the school. Mixmaster Wyatt live training starts next week. You can come to the first class for free. It's just like this. Um, it's just like this. If you like it like this, that's how our school is. It's live and we do comparisons and we teach and we have fun and it's awesome. So, all right, let me see. All right, here's a couple questions. This one from uh, from Raymond Gunn. So this being the little plate, would it be safe to assume there will be a release of a big plate? 
that is the assumption. Um, you know, yeah, so we do have a little altar boy that's been out for a great number of years without a, a giant size altar boy. But uh, so who knows? Uh, but is that does that mean there's never going to be a big of something else? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It could mean anything. Uh, you know, we learned a lot. Yeah, <laughs> how's that? Does that? Is that <laughs> That's I'm great. Run, Can everyone I'm read in between the office. lines? <laughs> I'm gonna run for office. Uh, you're the White House press person. Um, uh, <clears throat> yes, automated. This thing is gonna be sweet. From Scott. Um, other questions? Any anything? Uh, from Amsterdam, Yehuda says he's bluffing. I, 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 there was a gray area in there that I picked up on. Um, it was gray. It was gray. I, 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 used yeah, to I, I whitewashed the hair, <laughs> so you can't tell it's gray. Don't let him play poker. Other questions? Anyone? Going, going, gone? Anything at all? No? no. Well, I always okay. answer everything easily. All the yes. Any there. sound toys questions? No. Everyone's had a big helping of outer limits on their warm plate. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. How do I? Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's and good. everybody. I mean, if you know, I assume everybody <laughs> in this group is all connected, so they've probably gone out and got their little plate uh, before the free time goes away. So uh, if you haven't, do that. go get it. It's free. <laughs> There's no no strings attached to that. It's just awesome, little little chunk of awesome you get to take home with you. Little holiday generosity. You get yeah. a free plate while a whole Sound Toys team was lifting six hundred, five six hundred pound plates around the office. That's generosity. Ton That's and holiday a half, generosity. One and a half, one and a half tons of plate is what we got. <laughs> that is a lot of plate. It's a lot of um, plate. All right, listen, uh, Mitch. Thank you so much, um, and. Uh, Thank everyone for coming.